This is Tom Cloud with my bi-monthly precious metals market update. I got a, a, a question from a listener that wanted to just hit the highlights of the indicators that you could look at economically that are going on and what it could translate to the gold market or the stock market. Certainly not an expert on stocks. I'm just an investor like most of you. So uh, I won't give you any of that. You can get plenty of that from other places, even though I'm not uh, real bullish on the stock market right now, personally. But the first one is interest rates. I mean, we've watched the Fed raise rates 10 times, and then they bring it down one time. And uh, certainly that could bring a, a, a good thing to the bond market because it's been murdered. It's been slaughtered. You look at the indexes on uh, bond funds, and they've just been killed. But now it looks like there's a, getting to be a turn in the market as the interest rates head back down after going from two and a half up to over eight on mortgages. I mean, that's just unbelievable. And that was just over a two or three year period. So certainly you want to watch that. Interest rates on mortgages also are something really to watch closely. Uh, we're seeing interest right up around 8%. They have quadrupled from the bottom just three years ago. And uh, certainly you, you can't argue that real estate is in a bull market with that kind of interest rate because most purchasers of homes, uh, you know, are having to finance it. They're not paying cash for it, even though there are a lot of cash being paid by baby boomers that are, are wanting to own it outright and, and not have, um, you know, have that worry. So, um, Interest rates on, re on residential have got to come down or we're going to have a dead real estate market uh, net nationwide. It's uh, certainly not in the positive throngs it was in just a year or two ago, as hot as the real estate market was. And, and certainly there are some areas that are still hot. But right now, I see the residential real estate market coming down because I, uh, I just see a recession coming. Uh, yes, the government has stalled it. Uh, I thought I'd been here by now. I even said back that I thought by the end of the second quarter, of, um, by the end of September, we would have a mild recession. We haven't had it yet. It's because we're still printing too much money, but uh, I think we will see that. Uh, the listener also wanted to know what I thought about oil prices. Sitting there at 77 He's hearing, he's reading that we could literally see oil back to $150 a barrel. I don't see that right now because we see a lot changing over to electric vehicles and uh, away from gas uh, shell fuel. So um, I just say on the oil, I do see it trending up, but I don't see it, and I think that will cause higher inflation in the gasoline um, market. So I do think uh, that is going to happen. But the one, you, the one you've heard me talk about the most is the dollar value. And certainly that is a biggie, biggie, biggie. We're sitting at 106 this morning, uh, the 7th of uh, November. And uh, we've seen it fall from 112. It went up from 98 to 112. It's come back down about halfway but still, the key number is 92. If the dollar, and I think it will, gets to 92, gold will take a huge jump, and people will bail out the dollar, including Japanese and Chinese, who hold the most of the U.S. Treasuries. So watch the dollar value closely, because if that thing gets below 100, you better start watching it, and you better start getting your money into gold, because historically, we've talked about it, for every 1%, the dollar goes down, gold will go up 2.5%, 3%. And that's exactly what's happened over the past 12 months, as we've seen gold go up 22%. One year ago today, I just calculated this morning, goes up 22%. The next 12 months, I would not be surprised to see another 15 to 25 percent, depending on what happens with the two wars in the Ukraine and Israel. Uh, 
But I mean, we're just, I mean, debt has always been the, you know, they always talk about finance and debt. And everybody in the world, when this is all over, is going to want uh, money, money to rebuild. And that's when gold really takes off. That's when you get the crazy numbers, 3,000, 6,000, maybe even 10,000. I'm not predicting that. But certainly when all this money comes to rebuilding, it's going to be very inflationary. A lot of money created out of thin air with nothing to back it, just a bookkeeping entry, and here it comes. And now that is going to be the reason most of my clients that I'm doing consulting work for and, and doing uh, calls with families, which I've said to you recently, I've never had more requests for 30 and 45 minute uh, requests where clients could have their children listen, ask me questions. And it's been some very interesting questions. And, and I'll tell you, our children, meaning kids that are 35 to 50, uh, really a lot of them don't get it. They're still in the paper mode. And just uh, hope they all understand because they're going to get a great opportunity in precious metals uh, to see some very significant returns. Uh, so the budget, uh, the, the value of the dollar is a biggie to watch. I, I would watch it. I've had a client tell me he writes it every day in a book. He knows where he can look and see what the trend is anytime he wants. He says he's been very successful in buying metals from us, uh, making his own call, looking at just that indicator. We also was seeing the budget deficit just ended September 30th. Uh, the, the budget was at uh, 30, at over $3 trillion. $33 trillion is the debt, up from 20, 20 trillion just eight years ago. And no, no sight. I mean, it's just going to keep going until they crash the currency, which I think will be next year. I really do think it could be next year, if not next year, shortly after that. The sad part is because interest rates on the debt have gone from an average of about one and one and a quarter percent to the budget that was just $897 billion, 3% of 33 trillion is $897 billion. Highest interest debt ever in the history of the world, not just in the U.S., anywhere in the world. And it's going up further. If debt right now, the government's having to pay 5%. CDs are over 5% for a year, and that's what they're having to pay. The cost of debt is going up. 3% for last fiscal year is only part of the way. We're going higher and higher. Gasoline's going higher and higher. Inflation is going higher and higher. And inflation right now, we're saying it has come down from 7.8 to 7.2 based on an annual thing. I mean, this is nothing. I mean, we're still at triple what the, the inflation was only 24 months ago. It's doubled, the inflation rate is doubled. There's nothing good about that. And yet they try to go on and tell you inflation's coming down. Who sent it up? Who caused it to go up? Okay, so let's get serious about this and look at it. So I've talked about inflation. I've talked about a fixed income on bonds or CDs. Yeah, great out there getting 5% when you don't know what to do. You don't want to tie it up in stocks. or So you, you go in there, the fixed income, and you buy a, a one-year CD or two-year CD and, and get a great uh, return on it. Um, but anyway, the budget deficit is going out of sight. We'll probably see $3 trillion Last year, this time, the government told us that the, the debt, you know, would go down. And, of course, we knew it wouldn't go down. They predicted four, uh, $4.1 trillion in revenues coming in, I mean, $5.1 trillion, and only, we only got $4 trillion. We had a budget deficit, like I said, the biggest in the world, around $3 trillion in the interest. Like I said, I, 
$897 billion just on the interest. So anyway, there's never been a better time to diversify into gold. We'll start after this talking about product uh, in two weeks. Uh, you know, difference in product. We really haven't spent a lot of time. But the economic indicators are not looking good uh, for stocks and bonds. Uh, they're looking really good for people looking at short-term interest rates and precious metals. And the central banks just continue to buy. We'll get into that a little more uh, in two weeks. But the central banks, why do you think you know more than central banks know? Why are they the big buyers? We saw Turkey, Brazil, Argentina, India, uh, all in, in, in Kenya, even central banks buying metals because they know what is going to happen and they know eventually there'll have to be a new currency. And of course, we think it'll be backed by gold, which will give us a free a big jump in price because when you look at one or two percent of the world owning gold, the governments don't care about gold. They're, there's not enough money there to make a, a, a big play like we have in paper currency and money by decree. So anyway, um, keep tuned, uh, keep listening, keep watching, keep praying because this world is in trouble and this world needs help spiritually and uh, as well as from experts. I can help you along the way a little bit, but you still need Many counselors, God tells us that. There's many places in the book where he says to use many counselors and to spread your wealth, as we've talked about in Ecclesiastes. So it's very biblical to have um, investments in different pots like real estate and bonds and stocks and gold and silver and all these different uh, assets available to you. So keep reading, keep educating yourself, Keep stay tuned in, and we'll come in. We can be reached at 800-247-2812. That's 800-247-2812, and you can talk to Dan or Catherine or myself. With this bi-monthly Precious Metals Market Update, this is Tom Cloud signing out.